And uh, Jenny Radcliffe is going to tell us how Liverpool helped make her a people hacker. Thank you. Nice to go last, everyone's showing. So yes, so I'm paid by companies to break their security systems using non-technical means. And um, that makes me a human hacker. I'm going to tell you how Liverpool contributed to that in this talk. Probably the most famous building I've ever broken into was the Tower of London. I was due to give a talk there on security, on social engineering, and I had a bag with me with all my kit in to do a show and tell with a lovely audience like yourselves. The problem with this is that to do my job, I need lots of nasty stuff like lock picks, smoke bombs, six or seven false identities, mallets, disguises, etc. And the security guard was in no mood to hear it. He was big and he was mean and he wanted to look at my bag. I didn't want him to look at my bag. So what I did was I got my bottle of water and kind of spilled it on him and then dusted him down just in the interesting part of his pants. And he let me through out of sheer embarrassment. What that makes me is a psychological hacker. I don't look like a normal hacker. I don't use any tech. I'm crap at tech, but I'm good with people and they tend to let me in. And I'm afraid this is what makes me my living. Um, you don't think I look like a hacker, but a lot of people think I sound like one because I'm from Liverpool. <laughs> so I'm basically standing up all over the world giving presentations on how I got here a burglar for hire from Liverpool. So um, what happened was this, when I was a kid in Liverpool growing up in the late 70s, early 80s, um, the polo club was oversubscribed. The ballet was full, we didn't have a lot to do. So what do you do in these circumstances? Well, you play in building sites, Coll will tell you, in building sites, in, uh, we broke into buildings, into offices, and you learn a lot of skills. You learn how to get out of somewhere really quickly. You learn the law involved in breaking and entering. I broke into this urban hell of Liverpool. Um, and you learn to get in and you learn to get out really, really quickly. The first place we actually targeted was Southport Zoo. Anyone remember Southport Zoo? Horrible place, closed down. We broke in at night to see if the lion was locked away securely. I can tell you he is, or he was, but not nearly as securely as you'd like if you're breaking in. So I graduated to funeral parlors and eventually to office buildings. And all the time, I had a legit career as a trainer and a consultant. So I'm doing all this training and consultancy. I speak at a conference in Hamburg. And the security industry had paid attention, as had various intelligence agencies. And they asked me if I could break into a bank that Friday, like it's hard. So I did, <laughs> broke into the bank, got into the admin area, managed to kind of get some very private credentials and stuff. And suddenly it goes mental, right? And suddenly I'm being asked to break into theme parks, Canary Wharf, football grounds, factories, all because I could talk my way in and use influence and persuasion strategies to get past security. That's the job, don't hate me. They hire me to do it so we can patch it so the bad guys can't do it. We use mostly social media to stalk people, to work out who's the most talkative, who's gonna give away information on the company. The person is the conduit to all the information the company holds. And then it's just a match of really pinpointing who we're gonna, who we're gonna target through things like their hobbies, where they drink their coffee, where they have a drink, we initiate conversations, we hack them, and then we hack the company. They give us information, and I'm afraid that we're in, and you're left naked and vulnerable. Um, it's misplaced suspicion, it's because I don't look like a human hacker, I don't look like a hacker at all, um, and actually most people don't think that the human side of security is their problem. They think it's someone else's problem, so I'm right in, and we're behind the company. We get in as the way a technical hacker, could, hacker would. So what we do is manipulate people, get them to trust me, and then we manipulate that trust, we tell them how it was done so the bad guys can't do the same thing. What has this got to do with me being a scouser? Oh my God, it's everything to do with me being a scouser. It's not just the skills that I learned, but people talk to scousers, right? They tell me jokes. They even crack jokes about me being a burglar whilst I'm breaking into their company. Um, <laughs> And it's a cool thing, right? You know, I'm a scouser, it's fine. And I talked to them about Liverpool's actually change. We actually have a cracking polo team right now. We have Michelin-starred chefs, and that's opera and ballet going on right here in Liverpool. 
And you know, that's a cool thing. And I always point it out on the circuit because I get loads of heckles about being a burglar from Liverpool. I changed too. This is me speaking internationally about this topic and trying to protect people from being vulnerable to this human element of security. But what I never did was speak about it in Liverpool. So what I wanted to do was speak to a Liverpool audience and tell you that it's got everything to do with me being a Scouser. I wanted to thank the city and the Liverpool crowd for giving me the career that I've got and for making me a human hacker because without this city and what it made me, I couldn't have had the job that I have right now. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for all the things. That's how we're doing it this year.